Um, actually, my favorite story in the Bible is the story of Thomas. What? Um, it is. The uh, failure. The failure of Thomas. No, because, and, and it's my favorite story, and it, I hate the way that people talk about it. I hate it with all, like, oh, I have so much passion about it. In fact, the first sermon I ever preached was on that text. Um, because I was a, I, I, it was sort of like Youth Sunday. Um, which I didn't realize at the time they picked probably strategically to be the Sunday after Easter so that someone would sh actually show up and right. so that the priest probably didn't have to preach. Um, but they asked me to preach on that day. Um, and, and I fell in love with this story when I preached it the first time um, as a youth, uh, someone who never thought about going to seminary or, or doing the priest thing or any of that stuff. Um, you know, and I, like I said, I, I just, I fell in love with it and I fell in like, hating the way that people talk about it so much um, because you know so often this is the way the story goes it goes uh, Thomas is a doubter doubting is bad don't be like Thomas and um, I just think that is so missing the point because what do you have in this story you have it's um, by the way I also uh, I also drives me crazy that it's the story for the Sunday after Easter because I feel like it is the story that most people walking into church most Sundays like need to hear the most, because what is this story? The story is like all of the disciples are doubting. Like all of them are um, scared and afraid because Jesus has died and we didn't know. Like we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't know that they wouldn't be next. So they lock themselves in a room and, um, and in the midst of this room, through the locked door, somehow, miraculously, whatever, Jesus shows up and um, speaks to them. And they are moved, and he breathes on him the holy on them the Holy Spirit, uh, and then they run and they go find Thomas, and um, they tell Thomas what happens, and Thomas says, "Okay, well, that sounds great, but I won't believe until I put my hands in his wound in, in, in his wounds." And then, uh, and then what happens next? Thomas actually gets what he asked for, at least part of it. Like, Jesus appears to Thomas. He thinks he needs to touch his wounds, but he doesn't actually. As soon as he sees Jesus, he falls to his knees and says, my Lord, my God. And so, to me, like, it's an Easter story. It's not a story about doubt. It's a story about how far Christ will go to reach us. It's, it's a story about how um, nothing, not a lock on a door, not a doubt on the human heart, not a, not, a, not, <clears throat> not a stone on a tomb, nothing could stop the resurrected Christ from reaching us. It's a story about God's power and triumph and commitment to us as human beings and his followers. It's not a story about how we mess it up. I don't understand why we always have to try to make every story about God to be a story about how we mess it up. But e because Easter is not about that. It's about, yeah, you've got doubts. The risen Christ will reach you. Yeah, you're scared and you're locked away. The risen Christ will, re will meet you. Yeah, you're grieving and alone. The risen Christ will meet you. It's an Easter story. I thought it was about winners and losers. It's about the losers winning. Isn't that the gospel?